Hey guys, it's Drews here. I am here with another new video for you guys tonight. Tonight I am going to be filming my November wrap up. Now for my November wrap up, I thought of doing it a little different this month. I had two readathons that I participated in the month of November. I did readathon this month, which I didn't complete it all the way, but I was really happy with what I read for that readathon. Um, I also did, um, sorry, I'm distracted by my notebook. I also did Believeathon this month, so I thought of doing two separate wrap ups for those. But I decided overall, let's just combine those two readathons and just talk about all the 21 books. That's right, 21. I read 21 books in the month of November. I'm going to go over my reading stats real quick before we jump into the book that I read this month. So starting with my star rating system, I had zero one stars, zero two stars, seven three stars, nine of these were four stars, five of these were five stars, zero arcs, 14 of these I listened to on audio, seven of these were buddy reads, so I'll leave all my friends down below that I buddy read with, uh, go check them out, they're amazing. Uh, two of these were book of the month, two of these are completed series, five of these are graphic novels, Seven of these are uh, physical reads that I physically read, obviously. One of these in an owl crate, and two of these are library books, sadly, and that I read one, two, three, six middle grade books for Believe-a-thon, which I'm really happy with. Um, my page count for the month was 7,316 pages. That is crazy. Uh, the smallest book of the month that I had for uh, November was The Mortal Instruments Graphic Novel Volume 3. This is the smallest book I have for the month of November. And then my biggest book of the month was a tie between Blood and Honey by Sh Shelby Mahern. I almost said Serpent and Dove. <laughs> by Shelby Mahern. And also a tie with Wondersmith by The Calling of Morgan Crow. So those are all my stats and spoilers for what I read this month. Um, I am going to flip my notebook over now and I am going to try and get these pages to stay flat because I have my fan on because it's still somehow kind of hot in Vegas. So um, let's start off with the very first book that I read for the month. I won't be doing reviews for these. I'll just be saying what I liked about it if there's a reading vlog for it because I did a lot of reading vlogs um, this past couple of months. So the first book that I read uh, in the month of N November was Horrid by Katrina Leno. This is a new novel by Katrina Leno. She's my, this was my first book by this author. And I was kind of sadly disappointed by this. I just wanted three out of five stars. I was sad that I didn't love this because look at this beautiful owl crate cover. This is so pretty. I love the cover, but I didn't love the story. It was a weird type of horrid, horror, graph or not graphic novel, a horror, novel is what I meant to say. Um, this, I loved the writing. The writing was good. There was a little bit of repetitiveness in this story. Um, the character was a bit weird for me. Like she would tear out pages of books and eat the pages. Um, so that was kind of weird for me. I did love like the whole backstory on their main character who I forgot her name now. But I buddy read this with the Owl Crate group with Owl Crate over on Facebook because this was their book of the month for their Facebook group um, and now they're reading Legendborn which I'm really excited to read that I forgot to mention that on my December TBR but I gave this one a three out of five stars and it's my least favorite book of the month sadly I hate saying that but it was then we have a reread and that was On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I buddy read this with my friend Heather who I'll leave down below because I read quite a few books with Heather this month. So this was a reread for me. I love Brianna. She was amazing. She's a 16-year-old uh, rapper. She wants to be this famous rapper like her daddy was and her dad uh, was shot and killed by the crowns which is right in the dust jacket. There's no spoilers but um, this is not a follow-up novel to The Hate You Give, which is my all-time favorite book by Angie Thomas. Um, but this is set in the, like the same world and you get to hear a little bit of what happened in The Hate You Give in this one, uh, which I didn't catch the first time. So I'm so happy I reread this. I got this from Book of the Month earlier this year. I don't remember when, but I just knew I got it from Book of the Month and I'm really happy I did because I give this one a four out of five stars. 
And then the next book I re physically read, and that was Punching the Air by Evie Zaboy. I physically, or actually, yeah, I'll go back to that one. I physically read this one this month. I really enjoyed it. This book was written in verse, and it has such a beautiful cover for a beautiful story. Um, if you don't know, this is inspired by Yus Safa Salame. I probably worked that. I'm so sorry. I physically read this one just because this was written in verse. And this follows our character Amal and he gets locked up in jail for something that he didn't do and so he has this whole like court case behind him and all that. It was a very interesting story and it, something to learn from. Uh, I read this one for Rita Thin. I also read Horrid and on the come up for Rita Thin. So this one I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. It was really good. One of my new favorite books of 2020. And then the book that I forgot was Fangirl Volume 1, the first book in the manga slash graphic novel series that Rainbow Rowell has out. I read that one this month as well and I give up one a 3 out of 5 stars. It wasn't my favorite but I did read it super quickly because it was a graphic novel. It's just a graphic novel novel adaptation of Fangirl by Rainbow Row, which I should have grabbed my copy. It's actually right behind these three books but that's okay. Um, but if you know what Fangirl is about then I don't need to explain it. On to the next book. This is my first middle grade that I read for the month of November and that is The Last Life of Prince Alistair by Alexandra Bracken. I finally read this book you guys. As you guys know this has been sitting on my TBR shelf for years. I think this came out in 2018 or 2019 and I pre-ordered this copy. I remember I pre-ordered this copy and I was like I don't know why you're taking forever for, to read it because you are middle grade. Um, I really enjoy this one. I'm sad that this series is finished now. Um, this is one of the series I completed this this month and this year, which is one of my goals is to always try and wrap up the series that I have not finished. Um, I won't be talking much about this one just because this one is a sequel and there's quite a few sequels on my November wrap up. Um, I love the narrator. Uh, I forgot who narrated the audiobook for this one, but I'll leave it down below in the description. But the way he narrated this whole these two books in the series was well well done well listened um i don't know what i was trying to say there but uh prince alistair is a funny character and i love prosper reading and i'm sad that this one is finished for me now um it took me like two days to read it just because it was during one of my like weekends that i had off and i read it in two days and could not put it down so i give this one a five out of five stars as well and this was the first book that I read for Believeathon. And I'm actually happy I'm doing this um, video for you guys today because now after I talk about all these books I can post a picture on my Instagram so look for that and I can also put them back on my rainbow shelf so that's really nice. Um, the next thing, the next book that I read was my first graphic novel in the month and that was Swamp Things Twin Branches by Maggie Stiefvater. I talked about this in a reading vlog as well. If I can remember which reading vlog it was, I will leave it down below in case you miss it. Um, I believe this was in my book shopping vlog or in my reading vlog number two. I could be wrong. I can't remember which one of those two, but I talked about my thoughts and feelings in this one. I gave this one a three out of five stars. This is a graphic novel from DC Icons. And I never knew a lot about Swamp, the Swamp Creature from DC Comics. So it was kind of nice to learn a lot in this book. The one thing I didn't like, it was just like super science based um, for me, like too much science based for me. But I know if I give this graphic novel to my mom, she might actually like it because of how much science talk is in this. Um, I give this one a three out of five stars and it's my first graphic novel of the month. The next book I read was a sequel and that is Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend, Wondersmith The Calling of Morgan Crow. I picked this up as soon as my friend Lori finished this book. Lori finished this one for Believeathon as well I believe um, and she read this and she loved it. I think she gave it like a four stars or a five stars um, but I picked this up immediately after she told me her thoughts and feelings on this. And I believe we have the same thoughts and feelings on this too. Like I said, it's hard for me to talk about sequels, but if you love the first book and you haven't continued on with the series yet, 
I definitely recommend you picking up the sequel. I do have the third book, Hollow Pox, um, from Jessica Townsend go, coming to my library very soon. So hopefully I can pick that up in the month of December as well. Because uh, I would love to wrap up this series. But I give this one a 4 out of 5 stars and I really enjoyed it. And then the next book that I read was Paola Santiago and the River of Tears by Taylor K. K. Mahesh. Um, this is part of the Rick Ryan and Presents imprint and this was yet another middle grade novel. I forgot to tell you that Believe I read Going to Smith for Believeathon as well. And this was for also for Believeathon. Look at this cover. This book came out back in August but I didn't pick it up until like September I think. Um, but I really enjoyed this one. I buddy read this with my friend Lori as well and we both loved it. It was super funny. There's I won't spoil you of where it's at but like halfway in the, between this book the author is a young adult author, not a middle grade author. I mean, she is now, but like I knew her, know her name as a young adult author, and she slipped a cuss word in this middle grade book, and I was laughing at that. I was like, wow, she let that one get slipped inside the book. I'm shocked the publisher didn't say to take it out. Um, but that made me laugh. This whole book just made me laugh. I really loved it. If you love Aru Shah in the End of Time series by Roshani Chakshe, you would definitely love this. It's in the same realm, not the same realm, but like the same settings and all that. First person point of view, Paola Santiago loves science and space and ghost stories and all that. So I really enjoyed this. I read this in one or two days as well because this is a middle grade novel. I give this one a four out of five stars and I believe Lori gave the same reading for this one. Then I also read another middle grade novel. I was just on a middle grade kick after I read One to Smith, or no, after I read The Last Life of Prince Alexander, I was just on a uh, middle grade kick. And then, so the next middle grade book that I have read this month was Dragon Pearl by Yoon Han Lee. I finally read this book, you guys, as well. I re It's super short too, so I don't know why it took me like two years to pick this up. I think it's actually because I was at Barnes & Noble in the month of November and I was talking to one of the booksellers there and he was saying that I asked him if there was a book from the Rick Ryan Present imprint that I haven't read yet and he recommended me this. Um, I had this on my TBR shelf but didn't know what it was about until that guy told me about it in the store. Um, and once he told me about it, I was like, okay, I have that on my TBR shelf. I should pick it up soon. Um, Dragon Pearl follows uh, Yumiki, you know, not Yumiko, Mean, and she kind of draws, she kind of draws crests from uh, being a girl and a boy. Um, she tends to be this boy to find her brother on this missing adventure. Her brother goes missing, so she's on this adventure to try and find her missing brother. And she's a, uh, I forgot what they're called, shapeshifters, where she can turn into like a fox that she wants. And she finds all these new characters that she encounters. And it's really hard to talk about it, but I'll do a proper wrap up or a proper summary to this one in my Believeathon wrap up. Um, so I will talk more about that in that video. But. I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars and this is the first standalone novel from the Rick Ryan Presents imprint so I was really excited to read it but I also kind of wish there was a sequel to this just the way that this book ended but I know there probably won't be a sequel to it but I really wish there would be but there isn't. Anyways, long, uh, long spiel but I give this one a 4 out of 5 stars as well. S if you can't tell, I had a really, really great reading month from all these middle grades. Another book I gave four out of five stars to was A Tale of Magic by Chris Colfer. This is a first book in the spin-off series to the Land of Story series, which I read last year, and I was really wanting to read A Tale of Magic this time around. So I read it and I loved it and I completely fell back in love with Chris Colfer's writing. I knew I loved him as an author, but I loved him I love him even more this time around. I give this one a 5 out of 5 stars. It was such a great first book in a new series. Um, and the, pr the prologue in this one kind of foreshadows of what happens in the book. And I didn't realize that until I finished the book. Um, 
and that was kind of cool to see how it all plays out and now I'm hoping to read the sequel in the month of December so hopefully hopefully I love the sequel as much as I love this first one and then I read one of my most anticipated reads and that is Blood and Honey by Shelby Maherin this is one of my first books on my five star prediction TBR I actually have another book on my five star prediction TBR in this video um, and I read this one this month and I buddy read this with my friend Libby who has her booktube channel here I'll leave her booktube channel down below Heather also has a booktube channel so I'll just leave everyone's um, links down below so just check out the description box if you can um, but Blood and Honey was really good it felt really like slow and it, it was definitely a filler novel and I don't think it needed to be 530 pages long um, the main character Lou kind of annoyed me halfway through the book uh, my favorite character still read I still love him he's one of my favorite new male characters that I come across and this just felt like a filler book for me um, I won't be talking much about this one just because it is a sequel but I did really enjoy this nonetheless I gave this five out of five stars and I can't wait to, to see where the third and final book will take us uh, the next book I read, I read for Rita Thin, and that was The Songs of the Crimson Flower by Julie Z. Dow. This is a short story novella, part of the Empress series by Julie Z. Dow. The first book was Forest of a Thousand Lanterns, which I read last year, and then I read the sequel, Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix, this year, and then I decided to finish off this series this year. So technically, I completed three series, if you want to be technicality about it. Techno technically... I don't know that word uh, about it but I completed three series and let's just say that I re didn't really love this one as much as I love the sequel to this but I give this one a three out of five stars I will be keeping this though because just look at that pretty cover um, I actually bought this book without knowing that it was like the novella to slash short story to that series until I saw Jesse from Jesse the Reader talking about this book and then I was like oh yeah that's why I wanted to read this book in the first place and plus I got it because of the cover and it was from book of the month so I read another book of the month pick and I give this one a three out of five stars oh, that's falling then the next book is another book I read from my five star prediction TBR I have five more books to read off that list and that is Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson this is another Sanderson novel that I've been meaning to read forever I love this one this was such a really great sequel I give this one a four and a half out of five stars I buddy read this with my friend Heather thank you Heather for the motivation because without you I probably would never have picked this up until like whenever the third book came out so the third book comes out sometime in 2021 there was a release year but no release date yet and there's no cover reveal for the cover and there is a title reveal it's called nowhere it comes out 2021 and I'm kind of excited for the third book just because of what happens in here and there was a cliffhanger in this one so I'm kind of mad that I read it now and not till 2021 uh, but anyways I really enjoyed this one I give this one a four and a half out of five stars and I'll be moving on to the next book that I read another sequel that I read this month was Tristan Strong Pun destroys the world I almost said the title to the first book this is the sequel slash follow-up novel to Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky which I read Tristan Strong the first book uh, back in July and I loved it and I love this one even more I gave the first one four stars and then I gave this one five stars I read this book in one day in one sitting and I just could not put it down the audiobook for this one was fantastic the cast just grew from the first book to the sequel which I wanted to happen in this trilogy this is a trilogy so I'm sad that there's only one more book in this world but I hope he will be writing more other than just Tristan Strong because I really love Kim Wan writing and I just hope he has more in store for us um, if you love the Percy Jackson series you will definitely love this it's also own voices for the african-american rep and uh, I just really love seeing that for middle grades and we don't see a lot of personal color on a middle grade book so I'm really excited to see that in the world and hopefully you guys will pick this up. I really enjoy this. Definitely check out the audiobook if you can because it was really funny. I laughed a lot and I read this in one day if that doesn't tell you how I feel about this. 
Um, I give this one five out of five stars in case I didn't mention that. Uh, the next book is one of my most disappointing reads of 2020 by far, and that is Fable by Adrian Young. This is Adrian Young new series. Look at that. Um, this is Fable, and she is a pirate, which I didn't knew this was a pirate book going into it, but I was really shocked and like happy about it because I don't really read a lot of pirate books. But I really enjoyed this one. The reason why I said I was kind of disappointed by this because I didn't know what to expect by this, to be honest. I just knew it was by a new favorite author of mine and I pre-ordered this book uh, without even knowing anything about it. I just saw the beautiful cover and I bought it based off of the cover mostly. But overall, I really enjoyed this. The beginning of this book was super slow just because we are building up the world and the characters and getting to know the cast of characters. Um, all you know is that sh she got left on this deserted, I on this dangerous island by the sea. She gets left by her father and she has this quest to try and go find her. And she's just on a mission to try and find her missing father to see if her father will take her in or whatnot. Um, and if she does or not, or if he does and not, I don't know, read the book to find out. Um, but yeah, if you love pirates, if you love books set on the sea, definitely read this one because I was really shocked by that element of the story. Um, it was a slow in the beginning, like I said, but halfway through the book it picked up and I really enjoyed it. So that's why I gave it a three and a half out of five stars. And then the next book I read was the first book in my reread of this series, and that is the Mortal Instruments graphic novel by Cassandra Clare and Cassandra Jean. This is graphic novel volume one. I really enjoyed this one. I think I give this like a three and a half out of five stars, or I give this one four stars. Um, I read this in one day. I also put this in my Thanksgiving reading vlog, which you guys should be getting sometime this week, and I will talk more about this book in my reading vlog. Um, and then I read, going on to the reread, I read volume two, and I really love how we left off from volume one to pick up volume two. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one four stars. And then I read volume three, of course, and I give this one five stars. This one is still my favorite out of the three. I'm currently reading, if you saw my December TBR tonight, I'm currently reading, um, volume four I don't know why I just had a brain fart but I'm currently reading volume four and I'm really enjoying volume four as well so maybe volume four would be my new favorite in this graphic novel series but I really enjoyed this one I give this one five stars so those were the three graphic novels that I reread this month and I really enjoyed rereading them and being back in the world um the next book I read I buddy read with my friend uh Lori and that was Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Men and Scalco. I bought this book in the month of October and I was really happy with how this one turned out. I gave this one a three out of five stars just because I didn't really love one of the main characters, uh, Wraith or Wrath. I forgot how they said it in the, uh, in the audiobook. I listened to this one via audiobook. Uh, yeah, via audiobook and I really enjoyed it. I give this one like a three and a half out of five star, maybe a four stars. Um, this was definitely a very dark and gruesome book darker than I expected um, which I should have known going into the title and the cover of this book but like it was darker than I expected and I really enjoyed this and I'm so happy that I loved it I think I, like I just said I give it a three out of five stars or four out of five stars Can't, haven't decided on my exact rating yet but I did really enjoy this and I will be picking up the sequel sometime next year whenever the sequel comes out and if you love her first series, you would definitely love this. There's a murder mystery aspect in here. It says, two sisters, one brutal murder, a quest for vengeance that will unleash hell itself and the intertransinating romance. However you say that word, I'm sorry. I can't read on book two, on camera. Um, but I really enjoyed this. And if that tagline don't pull you in, I don't know what will. Um, I give this one three out of five stars or four out of five stars. Haven't decided on my rating yet, but I really enjoyed this one. And then the last two books I read, I reread, I reread Dear Martin by Nick Stone, and I finally picked up Dear Justice by Nick Stone. 
Dear Justice and Dear Martin, I really enjoyed. I love Dear Martin more than Dear Justice, though. This one was kind of disappointing to me just because I felt like it was an unnecessary sequel to me. Um, I did talk about this in my Thanksgiving vlog as well, as well as I talked about um, Kingdom of the Wicked in that reading vlog as well, which I will hopefully have out later this week. And so look forward to that reading vlog. And I feel a sneeze coming on. Oh. Um, Dia Martin follows our main character named Justice, obviously, and he is one of those kids who gets picked on a lot in middle school and or not middle school I believe he's in the high school middle school or high school I believe it was high school because there's like a lot of language in this so he was in high school and he gets picked on a lot for the color of his skin and so he writes letter to Martin Luther King Jr. which I thought was very interesting um, and so he writes letter to his like hero that he looks up to um, his idol is what I meant to say and he writes these letters never send them of course because obviously he's no longer alive but he always just be like what would uh, Martin Luther King Jr. do in this instant and it was very like interesting and uh, interesting learning experience to listen to these books I think uh, Martin Graham narrates these books if I said that name wrong I'm sorry I'll leave the correct name down below in the description as well um, I love listening to Nick Stone's books on audio I haven't read all of her books yet um, there's still some that I want to read uh, there's Odd One Out and Jackpot that I still want to read next I have Jackpot on my TBR so maybe I'll read that in December or in 2021 but I definitely love listening to Nick Stone's audio books because they're just really easy and like e they're easy to get lost in and I can just like look do things around my bedroom like pick up my room and all that while listening to these audiobooks and plus both of these books are really short they were both like a hundred pages or so maybe 200 pages and I read both of them in one day as well so I did talk about this in my Thanksgiving vlog so I give this one a three out of five stars and then I gave Dear Martin a five out of five stars I actually re-listened to Dear Martin so Mar Dear Martin was a reread for me so yeah there you have it those are all the books that I read plus the ones on the ground that you can't really see uh, I those are all the books that I read for the month of November I hope you guys love this wrap up sorry it's such a long video for you guys I wasn't sure how I wanted to do the monthly wrap up let me know how you guys think I should do monthly wrap ups from now on or I think I'm gonna do recent reads in 2021 is what I was thinking for my channel um, sometimes mid-month midway through December I will be talking about 2021 reading goals so I'm really excited for that video and yeah just look forward to a lot of great content coming guys um, I hope you guys love my TBR that I posted tonight I also will be posting this video tonight so I really hope you guys like it and stay stay in my channel for 2021 um, and I'll talk to you guys later thank you guys so much for watching I hope you love this video please give me a big thumbs up if you liked it hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet turn your notification on you know the drill I'll talk to you guys later down in the comments below and I hope you have a great day or night wherever you're watching this bye